So here's another quick little video about this, uh, this Remington 12 I've got here that uh, dates back to uh, 1930. And it's been in the family for a long time. Not quite that long, but uh, my dad bought it around 1964 from a uh, local uh, church fair. And uh, I used to, to type on this thing as a kid. And uh, so here I uh, have ended up with it. And it is the most impressive uh, typewriter as far as uh, performance to age ratio uh, and in general, really, of all the typewriters that I've uh, purchased, uh, it's, a, it's a 12 CPI, some sort of uh, elite, but it's a very... It's a very short elite, so it's kind of hard to to um, <clears throat> to uh, make out sometimes, just because the characters aren't um, maybe what your brain is used to processing. But um, <clears throat> it is nice; it's really nice. And um, uh, well, let me just put some uh, paper in here, and it's got. Uh, oh, it's got some some features that um, these old Remingtons had, uh, and one of those is this uh, bar across the top. And again, I'm not uh, any kind of expert or anything, so I'll probably call some of these things by the wrong names. But this margin indicator is on the front, <clears throat> which is which is pretty cool. It, it, it took some getting used to. But uh, listen to how smooth, smooth this uh, carriage return is. I mean, that's just beautiful. That's after being in a in an attic um, uncovered for, I don't know, 60 years or something. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's that. And I cleaned it up some, um, you know, kind of uh, cleaned the clean the uh, segment out a little bit. Not a whole lot. I didn't, you know, flush it out with any high pressure uh, compressor or anything like, like uh, I see a lot of people do. Um, I just, I think I just took a Q-tip, maybe some mineral spirits, maybe a wire brush. Uh, I can't remember, but whatever it was, I didn't, didn't do a lot. Didn't have to do a lot. And, uh, the really awkward thing for me is that the carriage return is on the right. So, <clears throat> I'm typing, I naturally, you know, want to do this. <clears throat> so what I've found out that I end up doing is I'll do this and I'll go ahead and, and scoot it over and then remember what I'm doing and then do that. So it's, <clears throat> it's okay. And I'm actually kind of quirky about not liking to use the carriage return knob to push the weight of the carriage back over anyway. I know that's uh, insane. But uh, I, you know, even on a standard left-hand sided uh, carriage return arm, I usually kind of use the whole body of the carriage to do it. And then I'll kind of just kind of nudge the, <clears throat> the thing over with my palm. But uh, I guess I just want this thing to get another, um, 70, 80 years of, uh, of life. But anyway, it uh, types very crisp. This typewriter types very crisp letters. A nice snappy report. So, and as you can see, this is, if you can see, that's that tiny, that's that tiny 12 point. <coughs> Um, typeface, but uh, with a fresh, fresh ribbon, it's it's uh, it's not it's not bad, especially if you're used to a really um, well, I don't know, a really uh, crisp uh, ten uh, CPI or something. So <clears throat> anyway, that's that's about the 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 about all she wrote with that. Again, 1930. Remington 12, which I understand is similar to the, uh, the 10, 
which was, um, you know, a more known and uh, desired typewriter, but um, if I'm getting that right. But uh, anyway, glass, glass keys, glass and chrome uh, keys. It's got the, the, the three, <clears throat> the three ink selector, uh, black, red, and uh, correction. And this, <clears throat> the spools are the kind that go in straight up and down and they go this way instead of, well, instead of this way, but they go this way. So they do have to kind of, the ribbon does twist a little bit going into the ribbon vibrator. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think that's probably something they gave up shortly after that, I would think, maybe not. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen a lot of these side, these vertical ribbons in any type of newer machines. Uh, it does have a, a carriage shift, but it's smooth enough to where I don't uh, really notice it. Really notice capital it. <clears throat> um, and then I, I never really pound the shift and let it go anyway, so it doesn't clunk down on me. Um, because that would definitely make, make itself known. This is an extremely heavy typewriter, not portable by any, by any means. So, <clears throat> um, I think that's all I, I was going to show and tell about this thing. It has the, um, yeah, it's got the, if this is still in frame, it's got those margin presets on the back. But you take these tabs out, they're kind of hard to, oh, there we go. You wrestle them out and you reposition them where you want and put them back in when you have a chance to wrestle with it. So I actually like those, the magic margin um, feature and some of the other, some of the other things that came up along the way are, are cool. I like those too, but, um, and of course that, that ribbon display on the, on the Hermes, uh, 3000s, those, those are nice, but, uh, sometimes I just like to be all mechanical and analog in it, you know, get the piece of steel and, and, uh, and plant it into the grid there. So, yeah, everything, everything works perfectly. Um, <clears throat> when I got it, uh, the mainspring string, um, was broken, so I just used I used a, um, this is for fishing nets, I think to like pull them in or something. I mean, it's too big for, for fishing string, obviously, but it has to do something with nets or something, I believe, but, <clears throat> or baskets maybe, traps. Anyway, grabbing straws, false information, I'm sure. Um, <clears throat> so there was that and then the, the platen, was uh, actually coming apart. It was cracking a lot. There's one right here. Um, those, those, are, there are a lot of easy remedies for that. I haven't tried any of those on the on a couple spots. I just put some uh, some matte finish um, gaff tape, and it's a nice, it's a nice piping surface to me. And I think the letters turn out really nice, and um, it's not too cushiony. And it's it comes out pretty even for me, even where the seam is. I tried to get the you know where I had to to you know put a separate uh, strip of tape, but um, yeah. So that's it. <clears throat> One more thing. Here's a little trick I learned from somebody's video. I don't remember whose it was, but check this out on these. And these older typewriters that didn't have one keys or explanation point keys, obviously, you know, you uh, hit a uh, comma and then backspace to get the period. But maybe I'm the last person on the block to learn this. But if you hit the space bar, that'll keep the carriage from advancing. So then you can just hit comma and period. And you've got your and you've got your explanation point. Wow. That's what you wanna do. Oh, what am I doing? Wait, you wanna 
gonna do two in a row. Okay, out, start over. And now I've got, uh, now I've got three of them. So, there you go. Hope you uh, got a kick out of seeing this, this big old tank. All right.